In this video, we're going to be going through how you can start using Python to automate the boring stuff in your life. And we're going to be doing this by going through a project that I built recently that allows me to completely automate my desktop downloads folder management. And I'm also going to be sharing you my general principles of what I'm thinking about when I'm building coding projects, which has been a highly requested topic on this channel. So let's get started. What I really love about coding is that it's not just a skill to allow yourself to build a very lucrative and nice career. It's also a skill to solve actual problems that you have in your life and just make the stuff that I'm doing anyway more efficient. And this is particularly exciting to me because what really got me into coding initially was the appeal of having this superpower to start teaching my computer to essentially do stuff for me and act sort of as this unpaid assistant that I have access to at all times. But the first question you might have is, well, why do we need to use Python? If I know C or Java or some other language, can we use those as well? And the answer is probably yes, you can probably use any language you want. All you need to do is Google to see if that language has the ability to do the things that we are about to do. But the primary reason we use Python is because Python simply has a lot of libraries and a lot of tools that make it very easy to do these kinds of automation projects that we're about to build. It's also very easy to learn and very simple to use. So yes, you can probably use any language, but in this video, we are going to be using Python and I do recommend using Python for these purposes because it's a very sleek language. Sleek, just like our sponsor, Morning Brew. Do you ever feel like that you want to be able to keep up with the world, but there's simply so much going on that it becomes overwhelming? That's exactly how I used to feel too. Keeping up with current affairs seemed like a chore rather than something interesting, and every morning I would always instead just gravitate to scrolling on social media. That's why I'm so glad I found Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that gets you up to speed in business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. And what I particularly love about Morning Brew is that they make reading news actually fun and informative, rather than a dry and dense style of most mainstream media. For example, without Morning Brew, I would probably never have got myself to learn about the interesting details of why Netflix's stock suddenly collapsed by 35% last week and what this actually means. So I can say that being subscribed to Morning Brew has genuinely made me smarter. And the best part is that it's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. So if you're interested in business, finance or tech like I am, there is absolutely no reason not to subscribe. You can sign up for free by using morningbrewdaily.com slash internetmadecoder or by clicking the link in the description. Thank you for Morning Brew for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. Okay, on the project now. So what our goal here is to do is that I build this program, which don't worry, we'll get into how I've done all of this. But when I actually run this program and while it's running, what I want to happen is that whenever I download an image, instead of it going into the downloads folder, it's going to be sent to this downloaded images folder and whenever I download a video I want it to be sent to the downloaded video folder for example let's say I'm downloading this image of the like button which you should hit by the way so as you can see I downloaded it right there and when you go to the downloads folder it's not there and if we go to my downloaded images folder it's just gone to the image folder so this is the goal that we're going to be doing here um, okay, so let's just talk about how I sort of think about approaching this. There's obviously a lot of things you need to do. You need to have the file running. You need to have it sort of listening to changes in the downloads folder. And then you need to basically based on the file type, have the program sent it to the appropriate folder. So there's a lot of different things that you need to figure out. And once you start a project like this, you won't really have an idea of doing either of these things. So where do you even start? Well, the best way to think about this is to not even worry about all these things at the same time. Well, one way you might think about this is like, okay, what is the first thing we need in order to have a program that basically moves files around in my computer? The first thing I thought is that, first of all, we need a way for our Python code to access files in our computer. So that's the first thing we're gonna figure out. And so how are we gonna figure that out? Well, just like any programming problem, you go to Google, you go how to access files on Mac using Python or something like that. And basically this is essentially what I did when I was coding this up. I think it was this article that I found where I found that, okay, first of all, I need to import this OS library. So we're gonna do that. And then with this library, if you use this scan der method, we can essentially return a list of all the files in that folder. So we're gonna be doing that. And so if we define the folder that we want, what we can then do is a basic for loop on this entries list, which is essentially just a list of all the files in the folder. So we're going to go for entry 
in entries basically this code is going to be run for each object in that list where entry represents that object in turn so if we just try running that we're going to stop that python and these are essentially all the names of all the files in my downloads folder currently okay so now we've achieved something we found a way to access the files in our downloads folder on our computer first up done now we can start worrying about the next thing which is like do something whenever there is a change in my downloads folder so whenever a file enters my downloads folder well you're gonna google that as you do with anything and essentially what i found is well, there's probably a bunch of ways to do it but one way is through this watchdog library so you're gonna install it Go back on the installation page. You're going to copy this. If this doesn't work, you might want to try doing pip3 install. It depends on sort of the version of Python you have and something like that. But essentially, you would go that, through that. You would press enter. It would install it. I've already done it. Now we have our library installed. And essentially what this library does allows you to listen for changes in your folders which is exactly what we want and i'm going to leave all these links down below in the description i do recommend that you go through them in more depth if you want to do this so that you fully understand what you're doing they usually have some sort of starter code for you to get started yeah you just copy it it's going to tell you all the things that you need to import essentially all of this code which now we can go over to my actual file i guess uh, I've got it down here. All of this just initiates all this process. You don't even need to know what all of this does all the time. The only th thing you need to change here is that for this event handler variable, you're going to set it to equal an instance of this class that you created yourself, of this mover handler class. This could be called anything. This should be called hello. And then in here, you would just go move, change this to hello. Like that, that doesn't matter. That you can define yourself. And then the other thing you need to do is for this path variable, you need to set this to equal the directory that you want to track. In this case, I want to track changes in my downloads directory. And here I've set path equals source directory. So these are the only things that you need to change in this piece of initializer code. Uh, so once you've done that, essentially what happens is whenever there is a change in this source directory, which is my downloads folder, it is going to fire the unmodified function of the mover handler class which is a subclass of the file system event handler class that is the requirement that's what happens once you've got all this set up now we need to start defining the actual code of what is going to happen when there is the change in this folder so now we get to use the scanning the directory code that we figured out earlier as we did before with os.scander and in here the source directory that we want to track as entries we're going to do a for loop for all of the files in that folder and then there are all these if statements for example if you're looking at this piece of code here if the name of the file remember we're going through all of the files one by one the name of the file ends with .mov or .mp4 this is the most common ways video files and the main most common video file types we're gonna do is set the destination folder to be test underscore der underscore videos with which will be defined up here to be this folder and again this is what you would define yourself you would define where you want all your video files to go for example um so we're going to define that as the destination and then we're going to run this move function which is something that i have defined completely myself and that is up here so what is going to happen it's going to take in the destination folder which we just defined and it's going to take the entry and it's going to take the name of the file what happens here is we're first checking for whether that file already exists. So we're going to get to that in a second. But if it doesn't exist, so if file exists, is essentially not true. It's not going to run this code and it's essentially going to go to this shuttle.move. And this is, again, another thing which I had to figure out by Googling. Now that we know how to access files in our computer, how can we, through our, our Python code, move files in our computer from one directory to another? And the way we do this is using the shuttle library, which the only way I know that is just by finding it on Google. I'm just saving you the trouble by showing it here. Um, and the shuttle library has this move function. So what this is just going to do is move a file in the destination folder. And that essentially completes what we want to do. And then we just do the same thing for images where if it ends in JPEG or PNG, we do the exact same thing except for this 
images or this downloaded images folder and that's what you saw happening earlier when i was downloading that like button image by the way if you're enjoying this video do hit the like button the only slightly more complicated thing was for music and sound effects but then music and sound effects you have the same file type so i had to figure out how i could separate them but and this is not perfect but essentially i went if the size of the file is less than this is i think this is like 250 megabytes or if the name of the file as SFX. So I found a lot of the sound effects I was downloading, the name included this SFX string. So if the name includes SFX or if the file is small enough, it's probably a sound effect rather than music. So in that case, I would move it to my destination sound effects folder. I could keep doing this for PDFs, for docs, files or whatever and I probably will but this is just the ver version I have now and it serves more of the purposes that I needed for at this time. I am going to leave this exact code in the description box where you can essentially use this exact same code if you want or obviously I encourage you to do this yourself as well because it is a very great exercise on Python and actually building something for yourself that you actually end up using for yourself because actually building a program that I use myself is a really rewarding feel. Like I built from scratch a program that actually is helping to solve problems for me. That's a really nice feeling. Whatever thing you can think of that you're doing on your computer all the time over and over again, some like mechanical task, there's probably an easier way to do it with code. And so I just challenge you to try to think of these things that you might be able to automate and then just go on Google type on how to do X on Python. And so that is how we learn. And building something that you actually use yourself is a very motivating and a very rewarding way for you to get better at coding. Whenever you want to run it, what you can obviously do is just CD into the folder and then run the actual program. But you'll probably find out that defeats the purpose of a lot of the automation if you then always have to go to the right folder to run the function. So what I'd ideally want to happen is that this function is just running all the time. So whenever I download something, this program is just always running. I haven't figured out how to do that, but what I have figured out how to do, well, in my root folder, which opens whenever I open a new terminal window i have this automate.sh file which essentially all this does is you, if you look at what's actually in this it bundles these two commands of going into the folder where this program exists and then running the program into this one file that you can just run using one command if you want to learn more about command line scripting and how that can really help you again i'm very happy to make a separate video about that so definitely subscribe if you want to do that this is a whole new area of programming that I'm personally just getting into and learning all the different productivity things and the things now this can really automate my life which I'm super super excited about but now I encourage you to try this I encourage you to try different automation projects that you might have try to think about problems that you have yourself and if you're a complete beginner in coding you might want to check out my how I learned how to code in four months video is by far the most successful video on this channel and I've received so many messages from people that have told me that it has motivated them to start learning yeah definitely go watch that video next right after this one thanks for watching